Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. So we've been down on cars a fair bit recently, lots out for different things, although I've been doing my best to try and fix this with the arrival of the two new V12s, the Aston Martin DBS and the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso, but we're still waiting for the Ford GT to be back from its extended service, waiting for parts that have been slow in transport around the world. That should be back really soon though. It's been away for a long time. And to be honest, I want to drive it again. We have the other two that are international, I'm sure there's, the SLS has gone for service as well, but today we're going to be heading up to McGurk Performance Cars to collect the V8 Vantage Roadster. They have completed the work, the full maintenance service and everything they've been doing to it. Quite a lot that's been involved in that and then bringing it back here later. Now to get up there, normally we would be taking the team car, the Audi RS3 Saloon, but unfortunately the other day it picked up a little bit of a puncture. And when I say a little bit of a puncture, nail right in the middle of the tire, took out everything completely flat. So thanks to having a few things here like the jack and axle stand, we popped it up, taken the wheel over to Whoops. They are kindly swapping that over, bought a new tire for it, and then we'll have that back in action. So what we are gonna do today, while I would have loved to take the GT8 and the DBS to go and collect the Vantage Roadster, to have my three blue Aston Martins together on the road for the first time, you might be able to hear in the background, it is torrential weather at the moment. So the M3 is parked outside. We're gonna be taking the M3 up uh, all together to go to McGurk's to go pick up the Vantage Roadster. Always a good time up there. Now, something a lot of people have asked recently, and the RS3 kind of brings me onto this, is about mechanical work. And it did cross my mind to put in a two post lift somewhere, maybe over here at the entrance area by the EV charger or something like that. But truth be told, this is, more the storage and kind of museum appearance of collection as opposed to where we're really going to do any heavy work on cars. While I love visiting garages like my friend Tavarish, Freddy, over in the US and seeing the kind of things he gets up to, with most of these cars, the manufacturers actually ask you not to touch them yourself. So while we will do wheels on and off and swapping them over and that kind of stuff, and maybe we get a tire thing down the line, it's still just easier to go somewhere um, rather than making it dirtier in here and I'm not going to say that it's clean in here we've got a lot of work to do and I'm a little bit worried about the banners staying clean we'll try and do our best but at the end of the day this is going to be very cleanly presented it's going to have a nice painted floor down the line stay tuned for all of that with the build and everything so it's more about cars being presented still actively in service everything being driven and used but not so much on the mechanical work front Anyway, we're going to need to get ourselves ready, head out. It's a good old drive to get up there. The weather, as I said, is really quite bad today. We'll grab a bite to eat on the way and then go and pick up the Vantage Roadster and run over the final part of everything that's been done to it and how it is now. Things are also coming along quite well in here. We have assembled even more of the Lego cars, the different speed champions and Technic cars and things. Still a lot more to go. Plus, on display, I finally have my one to eight scale Amalgam Senna. Until this moment in time, that's always lived away tucked in boxes. And now finally out on display, I've been waiting for the right moment or place. And obviously it will be a permanent feature. Maybe in the future, there'll be more of those kind of things as well. Anyway, before we go anywhere, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Revolut. Now Revolut is a free financial super app used by over 16 million people to help with payments, spending and sending money abroad, instantly splitting bills, also offering rewards and cash back. Plus you can personalize your card as I've done with the gold metal card with the Shmi 150 lettering, and you can do more things with the customization of that also. Now I've recently used my Revolut account to purchase one of these at long last, a wireless charger for my phone, and they actually offer cash back on select Amazon products that's purchased through Amazon. And talking about phones, I also finally upgraded to a better phone, let's say, the Samsung S21, not all that long ago, which improved the quality of my stories massively. They've now released the S22, and you can also, with Revolut, get cash back buying a new Samsung phone. So I probably need to do that, get the S22 and rock and roll with the upgrade as well. Anyway, we need to get out on the road because there is a V8 Vantage Roadster waiting to be collected. The weather, you can probably hear the M3 has started. The weather is so horrible. Today is definitely a day of umbrellas. This Aston Martin umbrellas. Very fitting umbrella. Yeah. Um, Tom's gonna pull the M3 closer. Means we don't have to get as wet. Yeah, this is not good. It's horrible. <laughs> I don't think we've had a day this bad in quite a while. Here's the M3. Your chariot awaits. Thank you. Let's go. This isn't much fun. I mean, I'm chilling at the back as I always seem to be. Tom's behind the wheel. Yeah, so for me, this isn't much fun because we are dealing with some of the worst rain 
we've seen in quite some time here. I don't envy you at all. I'm quite glad I'm in the passenger seat. Yeah, you know, but it's not like, you know, we had a nice big 4x4 box or anything that would have been perfect for these conditions that somebody sold. Yeah, Tim. I don't know what he's talking about. So instead, we are out in the M3 competition, <laughs> 510 horsepower, rear wheel drive, in about the worst conditions we've seen in a while. It's fun. Yeah. To be, to be fair, I know the G63 has departed, but onwards, other things will change. And this car needs some more miles. People are always asking why we don't take the M3 to places, so we're taking we, the M3. We do, we do. I've been using this a lot lately and just off camera, but it's a lovely car to just cruise around in. So yeah, why not take it? Enjoy the nasty weather on the way to Mago. We've done this drive a few times because we went up to drop the Vantage off. We went up to, you guys went up to Visit. have a check yeah. on what was going yeah. on and to see the new problems that they had found with it. We went up to collect the DBS and now we're going up today. Now it's all done. So we've been up there four times in the last few weeks. They're great guys. Look after all of the Astons. Well, the weather's changed. The sun is trying to break through, but there's less rain, which is good. It is. It's, um, it's much nicer much less miserable and all of a sudden the mood just feels so much happier, right? All good in the back? All good. Which car do you think is probably better for the drive back out of the Vantage Roadster and the M3? Given I don't fit in the Vantage Roadster, <laughs> I'm still going to stick with you're the You're going to say this. Um, I'm going to probably say this as well. But you're going to come in the Vantage Roadster. Am I? <laughs> You've just been told Maybe. You <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to be in there so we can film video clips. I don't think you can do that by yourself. I enjoyed the Vantage Roadster because of happy memories in that car. Yeah, so I think at some point I really would love to see you, and I probably shouldn't say this unfortunately, but I'd love to see you go back over to Paris with that car and recreate the road oh, yeah. trip that we all watched years and years ago. What's the better car for these roads, Tom? Geo Yaris or this? Oh, well, probably the Yaris if we're being honest, because let's be Small, fair, a bit can, more chuckable. You can use all of the power, whereas on this, if I was to attempt to put my foot down, we're immediately breaking speed limits and it's, again, on a day like today, and probably, probably a little bit sliding. Yeah, probably traction control as well. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'd say the Yaris is probably better for these roads, but I'm certainly not unhappy being in this. The good news, the car is here and looking fantastic. It has been cleaned up. It has had a lot of things done to it. In fact, a pretty heavy job. Of course, this is a permanent Schmiemobile. It was the first Schmiemobile and we've brought it here to go through everything, to have the full inspection and bring it into, well, full working order. There are extra things we can do and there are more things we will do, but you will notice, by the way, back there, the other glacial blue V8 Vantage Roadster that I mentioned when we came here to collect the DBS. Pretty unusual to have two of them in the same place. That being a 4.3, the original one, this being a 4.7, the facelift. But as I said, it's had a lot of work. Now, the crazy thing about all of the work is that had we taken it to a main dealer to do everything, this would be a bill in excess of £10,000. It's really been through the whole works. Now here at McGurk, thankfully, we've got that down to about £7,000 because it's a very labor intensive job or it's been a series of very labor intensive jobs, but with people who are specialists in this area with these particular models. If I just open up the front, we can have a little look for a second, but I'll go through quickly the work that has been done to the car, some cosmetic things, but fundamentally what's going on underneath, starting with the leak, which turned out to be from the timing cover. It does look good, doesn't it? The 4.7 V8. So the timing cover at the very bottom had been leaking. That was obviously fixed. While that was being fixed, they also changed the thermostat when then getting it back up to the full pressure came up with a leak from the oil cooler, which initially they tried to repair, you know, approaching the repair process first. Unfortunately, that still leaked. It needed a new part. That's about a thousand pounds alone just for the part. And a couple of other things that Tom had mentioned in the previous visit as well, like the lower control arms had to be replaced because the bushes had completely jammed up and seized. We also had some cosmetic things done. So for example, just to quickly go through those, we have new or repainted mirror arms just to sort those out inside some very nice extra things we have new seatbelt no longer frayed and horrible as it was before and also the repairs to the leather on the seat which literally looks brand new now perfect exactly what we needed there are some other things that the car ideally could do with if we just pop around to the other side for a moment here for example we're aware of this little ding here on the chrome finish piece but to fix that 
well, firstly, you can't right now because the part is on back order, but also we have this little peculiarity with the lights here on the door handle that have kind of depressed themselves. To get to those, you have to take off the door card. So when this part is in, we can kind of do that all at the same time, which will make life much more efficient and smoother. And there are other things as well. You know, we've done the wheels, we've got some new tires, but this is what this car needed. I've just taken off some of the stickers. I need to get rid of the, the glue around here. But this tax disc holder, they were actually abolished, I want to say in about 2013, 2014, and the system went all online. That was one I put in the car back then. So it's kind of fun to still have it. I remember buying that uh, online, I think probably on eBay or something like that. Anyway, that's been in the car since way back. So we'll leave it there just for old time's sake. And even you might spot up at the top of the windshield is a little mounting bracket, which was from the uh, telepiage device that you use when driving through France, as Tom was mentioning earlier. I think I got that when I took this on that first road trip with Alex, left it on there, and from the driver's seat, you don't see it, so it's ended up staying on there. But the long story short is this has been pretty involving. Control arms seized, lots of work to get those off, timing cover, oil cover, extra things. It all adds up, and it would have been a really well, it, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work anyway, but it would have been a lot more expensive, we could say, had I gone, obviously, the main dealer route. But I think for a car like this, having it in the hands of experts is so important, which is why we're here at McGurk and why I think that this car will keep coming back. The DBS will come back and the GT8 potentially as well, because you know, these cars need looking after. They need to be kept well. The thing I've got to do now, though, is go and pay and settle the bill. So I'll get that sorted. We'll be back in a moment. I've paid the bill and that segues us into something else that Revolut offers, which is vaults. You can create a vault within the app whereby your spare change on each transaction can be saved up, whether that's for a rainy day, settling bills, your next holiday, or even saving up for your next car. As well as rounding up your spare change, you can also set up recurring transfers or just stash away a little bit of cash whenever you feel like it. Also with vaults, you can set customizable goals, whether that's amounts or deadlines, to make sure that you've got the money that you need when you need it. Talking of deadlines, we need to hop back in the cars to head down to the Schmuseum to get this back home. Time to get back on the road, which means it's time for a startup Tim. It is, take a listen, enjoy. <laughs> That is a lovely noise. A lot of you guys were quite unhappy with me and Tom for suggesting maybe we make it a bit louder. But I think as a lot of you mentioned, it's classy, it's a bit classic. It's a nice cruiser to jump in and go for a nice civilized driving. So maybe we um, don't make it any louder than it needs to be. But this is looking lovely. Tim has a big smile on his face, which is always good and we head out of McGurk. Big smile. That is a big smile. Off it goes. Massive shout out to McGurk for all their help with this and obviously the DBS. It is great to have this thing heading back over to this museum. Now I just need to decide, which am I jumping into, M3 or this? Tom wants me in the M3. Hmm. Right, we've said our goodbyes. It is time to go. Thing with this car, by the way, when you start it, you hold your foot on the brake until you hear that click in the background. That's the clutch learning. It's called the clutch learning, literally. All right, navigation says something went wrong. That's not ideal. That's not good, because we have food to go and get, I believe, on our yeah, way back. Right. M3's ready. I think we're following the noisy thing. <laughs> yeah. So. And as you can tell, I'm not in the M3. I'm, uh, I'm in the, the Vantage. You opted for this. Yeah. I don't really mind either way. They've both got heated seats. I'm happy. Do you know what's crazy? This is a 13-year-old car. And I know that's not that old in the world of classic cars. But it is quite old, you know, in the sense of me realising that I bought it 12 years ago. Yeah. But it still does all the normal, everyday things very, very nicely. Yeah, it's a very, very comfortable car to drive and it's super cushy. It's quite... I would say American in this respect, you know, soft seats, soft ride, but a sports car. Um, we're going to be keeping the roof up because it's cold. There are heated seats as well. Yes, yeah, my hand's already on. Yeah. You, you say you were keeping the roof up. I mean, yes, it's a bit cold, but I put my roof down in the cold every now and again, rare occasions. Um, I can hear. Oh, it's a bus. I thought it was a plane again. I was going <laughs> to no, say what? Well, there is a plane. Is there? Somewhere. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's up there. Aircraft. Yeah, but it's not is quite. Is it a bus? Is it a plane? It's not is quite it an M3 the. Uh, yeah, probably the M3. <laughs> That There's is a, a lot yeah. of muddy water around, unfortunately for us. Oh, I'm 
unfortunately, this is um, not going to be a clean car when we get back as much as I would have liked it to be. No. It's going to go between the bumps. It'll be okay, hopefully. It's kind of funny when you drive a, an older car like this because the door mirrors are so small. You forget that because they made regulations require much, much bigger mirrors. I mean, just looking cars. at the ones on the M3 from here, the difference is crazy. The funny thing with the road opening up is hearing the sound of the M3. Obviously with the Remus exhaust, which is a lot louder than this very classy thing. It makes a lovely V8 noise. Listen to that. It's quite funny, isn't it? It is very funny. This is just... So this is the thing that changed, right? Cars of this era have noise, but they don't have all the pops and crackle, crackles, pops, pops and crackles that cars nowadays make. Yep. All of these bizarre sounds. Um, Especially when they are nice and loud like the M3. I really hope that they can hear some kind of V8 in the background. You can almost not hear this car in comparison. If I booted it for a second, then that's of nice. course you get some sound. And it's a nice civilised V8, that's what I was saying as you pulled out this. A nice civilised sound with this. It's not over the top, it's not too shouty. Um, I've also agreed with the viewers that we shouldn't modify this because we got ripped into for suggesting maybe we make it louder. I've, this I don't car, think we should. You got yeah. ripped into by me, this car's And you as well. Louder. Yeah. This car is staying as it is. It's a nice civilised cruiser, yes. Sunday morning drive, you want to go out for a cruise and something nice and casual, you jump in this. I want to make it just really good condition and for the long term, you know, it's, it's a car that I'm going to be keeping for a fair while. And things that we can do, you know, down the line, things that are in the works, are upgrading the steering wheel. So you can clean the leather, it's not particularly bad, but upgrading the steering wheel to have cruise control. It's literally a case of ordering a new wheel. One or two extra parts on the outside of the car that we can change. But other than the key, the key with its chip. Um, it's kind of annoying. The chip's kind of cool though, that's like... It's part of the history of the car. Yeah. Maybe we get a new key as well, so we still have this key. Just have one that's put this on display somewhere yeah un unprogram it something like that maybe whatever anyway there are more things that we want to do with the car 100 percent. we're not anywhere near completed but it's certainly in a much 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 better shape that was nice that was nice a green junior quadrifoglio hopefully yeah. you kind of saw it as it flew past yeah um yeah this is kind of where i wanted to get it for now you know thanks to mcgurk they've done a lot of work on it um, it's been a, a big job going through, but they've kept me updated and you guys as well while I was away with every step of the process. And, you know, obviously tried to not just say, right, let's throw out these parts and just bring in new ones because they've tried to work out, can you repair that? Can you restore it? What can you do to, you know, be efficient with budget, let's say. It's quite important, I think, because it's easy to get carried away. You know, it's a lot of money to spend if this had been to a main dealer and I've just spent about 25% of its value on fixing things which is crazy right big numbers right we're back at the cars which it was empty it's a bit dark yeah we, we parked in the corner you know out the way all alone <laughs> and now we have a uh, a squadron of cars around us so yeah time to head back to the museum finally we've had food um, cheeky Nando's it was a cheeky Nando's um, the usual yeah. Onwards, to the barn. We've made it back, and I'm sure someone's gonna complain that Tom is about to go straight through the soon-to-be office. But it's okay, because the cars are filthy, so we're not gonna bring them all the way in. And this is where it's gonna live, because obviously this will be under construction soon. Yeah, the weather is horrendous out. Yep, yeah, <laughs> hello Tom. The weather, is, the weather is horrendous, but that is gonna live here, and look at the, look at the marks. Anyway, we need to get the roaster in as well, so we're just waiting on Tim. Here comes Tim in the Vantage Roaster. It's I'm, gone. I'm getting used to imagining the office is there. Yeah. This isn't, I mean, okay, it's not as clean as it, yeah, that'll do right there, I think. <laughs> it's not super filthy, but it's definitely not as clean as it was when we picked it up, which, like I said, is a shame. That's the way the roads are. There's lots of flooding and puddles and mud and stuff, so. Yeah, but we've made it back with oh. two filthy cars. I've got nothing else to say. We're back. 
We're going to move the car eventually. For the time being, it's parked up there just to let everything drip away. We haven't really got the full plan for that. I'm intending to order some mats like we've seen at Topaz in the past. So when you drive in, it will effectively dry out the tires as you come in, because obviously when we've done a little bit more building, we're going to have to do some cleaning in here. When we've done all of that cleaning, we'd quite like to keep it tidy. So the idea is basically that we have two, let's say spots where the Roadster is and next, well, they're both Roadsters, but the GTR Roadster and next to it for dirty cars that have just come back. And then if we need a third, it's right there in the center temporarily, just a obviously temporary quick stop. Everything pretty much needs a clean at the moment because the weather has just been nonstop filthy. In fact, M3, Vantage, GTR, DBS is all good. STO badly needs a clean, LT, little bit dusty. Lusso's okay for the moment. That lot's all okay that's are, that are on the lifts. Those two aren't. So we've got to do some car washing at some point. Um, but obviously for tonight, we'll get the cars onto their CTEC smart chargers, get them parked up, and that will all be good. So we've had a pretty productive day, obviously heading up to McGurk, where we've been a few times recently, including collecting that lovely thing. It's wonderful to have this back and technically to have the three blue Aston Martins in one garage together. In some ways, it's like the original blue crew i want to say with the three of them we've got a good mix of astons in the garage you know the auto grand tourer the manual loud noisy fun thing and the sporty gt with the convertible with the paddle shift three different gearboxes two v8s one v12 works out pretty well overall so it's a huge thank you to mcgurk for all of the work that they have done on this over the last couple of weeks to get it back into Let's, I was going to say tip-top shape. There's more we need to do, as I've said, but we're getting there. The restoration of the original Shmimaville, my first very exciting sports car, the first car that was ever filmed while I was driving on my Shmi 150 channel. And of course, also a big thanks to Revolut as well, where we've got the personalized card. Haven't really spoken much about it, but you can customize your card. We've got the gold metal card here, change different colors, add different logos and graphics and emojis, and even freehand sketch. And you get a 20 pound welcome bonus as well with Revolut. So do check that out with the link that you got down below as well to find out more. So big thanks to Revolut. Wow, well, I think that's it for today. So until next time.